What's up guys, this is Ray and today I'll be talking about the 2021 Japanese movie Under the Open Sky, otherwise known by its Japanese title Subarashiki Sekai. And this movie is directed by Nishikawa Mika and stars Yakusho Koji. And Yakusho Koji is one of those actors which uh, if, he, if he's ever featured in a movie, most likely he'll be in a leading role. He's definitely one of those go-to actors where if his name is attached to a project, uh, it gets my attention and I definitely want to check it out. And Under the Open Sky, it's actually based off of a novel called Mibuncho, which is a, an element of the story that pops up that pops up throughout the plot. Uh, but it's written by Saki Uduzo. Before we dive into this review, if you guys are new to Ega Man Rei, I upload reviews and discussions of Japanese movies every chance that I get. So if you're new to the channel and you did the content, you, know you can support the channel by uh, checking out other videos featured here and also of course by subscribing but let's go on with the review so under the open sky it's about this middle-aged dude by the name of mikami and he's fresh out of prison uh it's not his only stint in prison he he's you know throughout his youth because he was just abandoned by his mom uh, he's been in and out of juvenile detention centers, but this time he spent 13 years in prison uh, after being convicted of murder. And while he serves his time, his wife leaves him and he manages to reform himself into a decent human being. So uh, he gets put out into the world and the central theme of this story is him trying to re to uh, reincorporate, to reintegrate with uh, the world that has advanced well beyond him. And beyond that, reintegrate with the world that doesn't really want him. Because this movie has a lot to say, to say about the way society, I'm not sure if it's specifically Japanese society, but society in general, on how they view ex-convicts, especially those who genuinely want to reform themselves and, you know, restart their lives and, uh, you know, find a decent job, you know, try to make good of what they did in the past and all that. This movie, that is centered around that theme, essentially. And as Mikami uh, tries to reintegrate himself into society, as one would expect, he comes across a number of different obstacles. For example, you know, as I mentioned before, the world doesn't want him. Everyone kind of looks at him as if he's about to do something, like he gets accused of shoplifting. And, you know, when he's at the city hall with a buddy uh, trying to get his life straightened out, he finds out that because he's uh, he's a suspected former Yakuza member, I don't think he, I don't think it was really clear that he was an actual Yakuza member, but he was a gangster, you know, he's a, he was a bad dude. But anyways, people of his status aren't qualified for welfare benefits, so basically this guy is starting from zero with nothing really to help him out. And as one would can expect from someone who is a former gangster or at least someone who has been associated with Yakuza in the past, his past does tempt him to come back. So that's the gist of the story. At least that's how it starts. Of course, as usual, there's a lot more to it. I try to keep my synopses uh, as quick as possible, although I do, uh, you know, I, as usual, I do tend to rant about random things. But anyway, let's get into the positives of what I liked about Under the Open Sky. And there's a lot. And it has, uh, the majority of what I liked about this movie has to do with Yakusho Koji's performance. Because he's an absolute legend. If you haven't seen any of his movies, uh, definitely check any of them out. He's a standout in each and every one of them. And this is no exception. His character in this movie reminds me a lot of his character in uh, that Korea, the movie, The Third Murder, uh, where, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a convict, he's a criminal. But this time, um, it seems like uh, there's a lot, I feel like there's a lot more layers to his character in the story. And that's something that's really interesting. Like, you know, you, you meet him, and, uh, you know, it's almost comical the way he interacts with everyone while he's in jail. And then he comes out, he's confused, but at the same time, he's trying to have a positive attitude. But then, you know, things happen and then he has to recall that that bad dude side of him to 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 handle certain situations and then you know all the while he's trying to keep it together mentally he he's constantly taking uh, i think uh medication for his high blood pressure was it anxiety I can't exactly remember but uh he's always trying to keep himself mentally you know together but things just keeps happening and the way he react the way 
he reacts to everything, the way uh, Yakusho Koji performs each and every one of Mikami's mannerisms. It's fantastic, especially when it gets into those really emotional scenes when he can't keep it together and starts breaking down and you don't really know what he's going to do. And I also appreciate the character's journey, the character Mikami's journey. You know, like I say, he starts off with zero. He actually, and actually one of the first people he meets coming out of jail. You know, he meets with an old acquaintance and they have a few drinks, but he also meets with this film director who's been tasked by one of his producers to uh, make a documentary out of Mikami's life. Think of him make, make some good TV. Of course, Mikami agrees to go on TV, but his reasons for going on TV are much different than, or rather, it's kind of like, how do you say? Uh, he has the, the wrong impression about why He's, going, he's being featured on TV. You know, he, he wants to go on TV for a different reason, which I don't want to say for fear of spoilers, but uh, there's that kind of awkward interaction. And also, you know, these he, anybody he interacts with is just awkward. And that's the charm behind uh, Mikami's character and the way he develops into becoming, uh, into, into reintegrating with Sutter, at least in his, in his attempts to. And along his journey from starting from zero, he has to even retake his driver's license because because of his all the time he spent in prison, his driver's license has become invalid. So because of all the rules set by uh, set by the system, uh, his driver's license is, he just has to start from zero. He has to take the test all over again. And it's been a while since he's driven, so you know it leads to even more. Uh, hysterical antics and you know, he tries so hard to find a job you know just anyone who would hire him but they all look at him they'll they all look at his uh, history that he's an ex-con uh, they the way he the way Mikami's viewpoint is at least the viewpoint that has been molded because um, from his youthful days that comes into conflict with any with any time he's trying to find a job and it's kind of sad you know it's it has a very uh realistic message it really you know this kind of stuff does happen and it's kind of sad to see it happen to someone like mikami and it gets so trouble it gets so hard that you know as i mentioned earlier his past starts calling back to him he gets in touch with some old acquaintances in the criminal underworld um and that's part of the character struggle. But one thing that I want to point out is that this movie is not a, 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 a Yakuza movie of any sorts. It features some elements of, that would be in Yakuza movies, but this is not a Yakuza movie. This is got about a guy, an ex-con who's trying to reintegrate uh, with society, you know, uh, uh, his past aside. And it's interesting, this movie doesn't do anything to glorify uh, the life of a gangster, the life of a yakuza, at all, and I, you know, I think similar movie. Any if it's if a movie was like a crime drama or crime thriller, they might go that path, but this movie doesn't, and I thought that was pretty interesting. And as what one would expect, since Mikami is an ex-con, uh, there are a few scenes of violence, although the scenes of violence aren't a predominant occurrence throughout the movie. It's used very sparingly and very intelligently. And usually these moments of violence, uh, you know, it's like uh, when you look at an ex-con, you're like, you know, don't, don't do anything bad. Don't do anything to hurt people. Otherwise, you know, um, it's just gonna make it worse. But the situations that they throw Mikami in, it's like really tough to avoid uh, using violence violence to solve anything and the ones that the, the, these moments some of these moments which are not solved by violence often end in hilarious ways and uh, as you can tell by what i've been describing there's a lot of j genre bending in this movie like at its heart this movie is a drama and there's a lot of there's so many touching moments especially when it comes to uh you know mikami struggles and how realistic the viewpoint uh, the realistic the portrayal of society is when it's dealing with an ex-convict. That is very disheartening and very saddening to see on screen. So this movie at its heart is a drama, but it does mix in very well moments of, of comedy. And you know, it's very like kind of fish out of water, 
really awkward style of comedy, but it doesn't steer away from the overall message, from the overall dramatic themes of the story. And that was one thing that was brilliantly done. And the music was fantastic. And I think one thing I really appreciated is that, you know, throughout the course of the movie, there are a bunch of um, just scenic shots of Tokyo, like probably taken from a helicopter or something like that. I think most of them are at night, but you get a lot of nice shots of the cityscape and you know it kind of it adds a bit of a, a lot of atmosphere to the storytelling and as far as the negatives I have to say about this movie nothing at all I enjoyed it from minute one I definitely recommend anyone who likes uh, Nishikawa's other movies or even uh, Koreeda's movies to go and check it out I actually I've I read somewhere that Nishikawa was uh, an apprentice of Koreda at one point during her career, and that kind of that kind of style shows a lot when you watch this movie. You kind of feel attachment, uh, human attachment to these characters as you would in the Koreda movie. But overall, what do I have to say about Under the Open Sky? It's a, it's a masterpiece. It's fantastic. You know, it only came out uh, this month in February, and you know that's pretty good start to 2021 considering how dry 2020 was but anyway uh the reason why i think this movie is a masterpiece is just because of how realistic the depiction of as i keep saying it over and over again just the uh, how society and then just how people in general uh react to ex-cons uh and how ex-cons are you know the, all the troubles that they might encounter when trying to restart their life and also how they might be exploited because as I mentioned earlier there's this you know uh, Mikami meets with that film director who wants to make a documentary out of, out of his life and uh, it doesn't exactly exploit him on purpose but some of the things that they not really ask him some of the things they you know they just follow him along but to be exploited for cheap entertainment when he's just trying to be an honest person that just shows another part another dark side of how society uh acts towards ex-cons but yeah definitely check it out if you have the chance but yeah those are my thoughts on under the open sky what did you guys think or what kind of questions did you guys have please let me know in the comment section below don't forget to leave a like share and subscribe follow me on all the socials and by all means if you really did the content please check it please check out any of the other videos i have featured on this channel thank you so much to all my patrons for sticking with me to this day and i promise to uh address uh the fact that i have been inactive for the past three months or so uh on my patreon page so don't worry about that guys i'll, I'll get you covered um but everyone else yeah thank you so much for watching and i hope to catch you all again in the next video take it easy